Abraham's servant found a wife for Isaac at a well. Jacob found a wife at a well. Moses found a wife at a well. Apparently, wells were the hot spot in the days of the patriarchs to find a wife. In John chapter 4, Jesus is at a well, and he meets a woman. Now, Jesus doesn't marry this Samaritan woman, but she does sort of serve as a stand-in for the bride of Christ, Jesus, who is the groom. Now, Jesus is in Samaria at Jacob's well when a woman comes out to get water. Jesus initiates a conversation with her, which really surprises this woman. Jesus quickly turns the conversation to the gifts that he has to give, in this case, living water. Like Nicodemus in the chapter beforehand, the woman's confused. Where is Jesus going to get this living water? The answer is Jesus. He is the well from which this water is to flow. He is the gift of God who has come for all people. He sheds not only his blood on the cross, but there's also water that pours out from his side. Just as the bride for Adam was created from his side, so the bride of Christ is created from his side in the waters, the living waters of holy baptism and the blood of his holy supper. Now, this is further emphasized by Jesus asking the woman to call her husband. She has done. At least not right now. She's had five of them, plus the guy she's currently with. Kind of sounds a lot like Hosea the prophet and, and his bride. But again, this is to point us to the church, to the bride of Christ. See, this woman has had men who promised to love her, and she promised to love them. But in the end, they abandoned her when they were done with her. As the bride of Christ, we, the, the church, we love to chase after other husbands who promise to love us, to give us the world, to make us the center of their universe. But when they have used and abused us, they abandon us, leaving us destitute with nothing but a broken heart and broken life to show for our devotion to these false husbands. Other times, we are the ones who go chasing after a different husband, another God, someone or something that we think is finally going to make us healthy, wealthy, and content. But in the end, they all fail us. Christ comes as the bridegroom who will have his bride, the church, you with all your sin, giving himself up in death, even death on a cross, to wash his bride clean in the living water flowing from his side in holy baptism, forgiving all of our sins and adultery, which the scriptures simply say is idolatry against him. Jesus has come for this Samaritan woman and for you to save you from all who would use and abuse you, including your own selfish nature that seeks love in all the wrong places. Christ the perfect bridegroom for you, to love you no matter what, by his death and resurrection. What do you value? At Concordia University, Nebraska, we value the equipping of church workers for lives of service to both church and world. In a culture where our faith can often be met with derision, our world needs ardent Christian leaders to rise to the helm and steer the next generation of Christ followers into new territory. You have the God-given gifts. We have the tools to uncover and develop them. We are Nebraska's university with values.